the Lord and we give you praise and we thank him we are still here in the land of living and as long as we live as long as we're here all praises go to him he is the only one to be adored in all things and in all situations we've seen in our times things that ought not to be happening and then everyone is wondering the way the world is going from nation to nation one corner to the other corner to the other corner but in all these the nation of the Lord is magnified. He is still Elohim. You know, yesterday night I was just looking out and then the moon still there with the clouds moving around it and then shining quite very bright and I just looked up and said, glory be to Elohim. He is still our father. He is still there. He has not given his authority you know to destroy the world or to do whatever to any man is still in the hands of elohim to determine and everything is working according to his determinate counsel so let all created bow and worship him elohim father we thank you this morning we give you praise we ask that you speak to us through your word as we learn and study and learn lessons from the life of the disciples our prayer Heavenly Father, is that we will look into our own lives and whatever you need to fix. Father, we are very open and say, have your way in our lives. What we need to learn to get us to the next step, Lord, give us the grace to grab it with all hands and with all joy. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, amen. And amen. So this morning, we will start with the life of, we're looking at the life of Andrew, wonderful young man. So let's start first. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, 41, He first findeth his brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. So we're going to look at these attributes. Don't forget, we're studying them to see why Elohim chose these twelve to be in his church. The 12 member church he goes everywhere with them do deep things with them so we're studying them one after the other to see why is it that Jesus called them and used them and then look into our lives and said mm, okay is that why then I'm going to do or pray that the Lord will give us such grace so number one is that he find that his brother Peter Andrew called his brother so those the Lord we use are those who wouldn't keep the good news to themselves. They wouldn't just want to go to heaven without their families. They will take them along. They will pray for them. They will minister to them. They will send cards. They will speak to them in every way. They will be patient and then get in them. So he's look, God is looking for those who will be, he will use as features of men who will have the compassionate heart to reach out to others because we are saved to reconcile other people and then to reach out to every creature and the question is am I such and what do we see today why Peter um, Andrew was called is what some people don't do again at church because um, evangelism is left for the ordinary brethren and those who are new converts evangelism is not mm, for anyone who's got a title now and then i wonder how many overseers and bishops who will still go out on the street to knock on doors you know stand with people to minister to them and then have they retired themselves that's the question have you retired yourself because you've been in the lord for 10 years 20 years or you are now the overseer or apostle or pastor or whatever title so you don't go out again for evangelism and what do we see to the you know unfortunately most of our evangelism teams are not well attended they're the least group you see in our churches because people don't deem it necessary but looking at the life of Andrew, one of the criteria or one of the qualifications that made him suitable was being someone who can call in others amen and when we look at it brethren if you can't win one person and you can't go out on the street and you're asking the lord to give you a church of 100 million and one million it's not possible 
because it's by winning one we'll learn lessons we'll learn how to do it we'll perfect it and then we can then know how to handle one because the bible says that he that winneth soon is very wise and what do we see in crusades today people come to crusades for miracles signs like the time sign seekers in the time of our lord jesus um they were not going to jesus for salvation or to repent but for signs and wonders and what god can give them the healings that will happen may we pray that today that our outreaches will be turned to reaching out to the souls of men and bringing them amen when we teach them and not to observe signs and wonders will follow hallelujah so brethren these are the people the lord will use those who will find others find your colleagues find your neighbors find your brothers reach out to them find your sisters keep out when you go out there ask the lord to minister to you give you wisdom to use every opportunity to reach out it's not it's not hard it's very difficult Apostle and I we 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 went somewhere last two weeks the very least opportunity the lady said something we used it immediately to say look at this go to this go give websites and just use every opportunity if you're used to it it becomes part of you amen second thing we see about andrew that qualified him was there was no complexity with him not at all simple man very john chapter 142 and he brought him to jesus and when jesus beheld him he said thou art simon the son of jonah thou shalt be called kephas which is by interpretation a stone wow he brought his brother peter to jesus and the lord made a pronouncement on peter wow he didn't feel bad he was the first to find the messiah and he's still andrew nothing was said he wasn't that he, his, his name was changed he was still andrew but he brought his brother and immediately jesus set his eyes on him he gave him um a pronouncement elevation promotion wow as soon as jesus saw peter he changed his name the ordinary person would complain at this he came to church because of, before this brother and then he was being recognized made an evangelist and not her not him how come peter who joined letter was given a title and a name change before me he didn't get offended he didn't get angry. He didn't say, I brought Peter. Jesus, don't do that. But is that what we see in various places today? Yes. People complain a lot. Why did you give her dickness and you didn't give me? Why did you make him an elder and none was given to me? I've been in this church before them. It's not about being at church. It's about he who created us knowing what he has put in us. And he calls and he decides and he does with us whatsoever he will. So it's not about the title. So Andrew was a typical example of someone who didn't really bother. Wow. Well, if I've brought my brother, um, who should who should be the resident pastor? I think I've done my bit. I've done my bit. If I'm the one to win the next revivalist that we hit the world, well, you've done your work. You've done well. Well done. Whatsoever that person does, and then the one million and ten million and the whole world, they will look back. It all came from you. So, brother, let's learn to do our own bit at church. Amen. So the Lord, um, we can see arrested Saul. The disciples were there with him three and a half years. And when he arrested Saul to reach out to the Gentiles, that was a reason. The fishermen couldn't have done that. Those who were so timid with him couldn't have done that. 
and then the disciples recognized that look at what peter said in second peter chapter 3 verse 15 and 16 he said there an account that the long suffering of our lord jesus is salvation even as our beloved brother paul also according to the wisdom given unto him had written unto you as also in his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destru um, destruction. Peter recognized the grace that was in Paul and commended him here in Second Peter chapter 3. Let's be people who commend others. Amen. Ah, you've been in church, you can't sing, and the Lord brings someone who can sing at church. Let's celebrate her. Let's celebrate him. Wow, you're so timid, you can't speak out, you stutter when you're talking, and the Lord brought, brings in an eloquent person who can minister with wisdom. Wow, let's go out on evangelism with him. While he's preaching, we are praying so that it will be backed up. No um, complexity, no feeling of threat. Don't subdue anyone at all. When the Bible says the Holy Spirit came when they were praying and said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas. They didn't say, why Paul? He just came in yesterday. Quickly, they lay hands on them, prayed for them and sent them going. Hallelujah. So he was able to come back to tell them about the second, the third missionary journey. It was fine with them. Go ahead. They supported Paul to make sure that he's still doing it. So don't feel threatened. There's no need to be angry, push and shove, play politics in the church. It doesn't make any sense. We are there to complement each other. That's why we are there. In Ephesians chapter 4, 9 to 14, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers so that the church can profit with all. So all of us are giving unique gifts. The gifts are bespoke. Yours is the best. No one can do it better than you do. So there's no need being angry or jealous or doing carnal things to outshine other people. You see that a church trying to outshine others, even when prayers are going on, someone is speaking in tongues, they'll be screaming on top of their voices so that others can hear that they can speak more than they do. Those things are carnal and shouldn't be. You're disturbing other people praying. If there's no one to interpret what you're praying, please be, quite, be very quiet. Don't let others hear. There should be order. So, brethren, um, be diligent and then look and um, find out what the Lord has given to you. Use it and make room for others. Don't loom large and cover everywhere. Amen. So, and remember, we're not talking about the canal pastors. We're not talking about those ones who just grab people and give them um, titles so that they can keep them because of their money or their influence we thought we're not talking about those we're talking about the spiritual which jesus himself is the one that endows and chooses and places in position amen so the number three thing um in the life of um, andrew that is quite very um worthy of emulating is he will not settle for less he will not settle for less. John chapter 1 verse 34. The Bible says, And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, Behold the Lamp of God. This was John the Baptist. Behold the Lamp of God. And the two disciples heard him and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following and said unto them, What seek ye? 
they said unto him, Rabbi, which is to be interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. Wow! Big lesson. Andrew was one of those that followed John, one of the disciples of John. John the Baptist bore record, bore witness that Jesus is the Son of God, the Messiah to come as soon as Andrew had that. That was it. That's what we're looking for. He followed Jesus. Andrew went for the best. And how many of us today go for the best? How many? A lot of people are in the places where they are not being fed properly. They know things are not right. Not at all. They know that the full gospel is not preached. They know the place is a place of error, yet they remained there. When people complain about wrong practices and teachings at church, I ask myself, what are you doing there? Complaining and murmuring is sin. Go away. Move. If they've left, go. Don't stay back. If the Lord has opened your eyes and revealed and says, this is not where I want you to be fulfilled. This is not where, please, there's no need to continue the next day. Though John the Baptist was powerful, he was powerful. He preached the right message. He came to announce Jesus and to go. Andrew had the insight to know that this is just very a bus stop. There is a destination. So he got off the bus and entered into the one that will take him to the destination. How many of us are that insightful? How many of us are that alert in the spirit? Some people stay back in places where they are not being fed, place of error. Why? There are so many reasons. A thousand and one is either they are close to the pastor or they are his um, friends or their friends go to that church or their parents or the church, the pastor has a, a charisma that attracts them. He's eloquent. You know, so many reasons. When you hear that, you say, is that the reason why you're taking a risk? Is that the reason why you're playing and joking with your eternal life? And then what still when you've been in that church for a long time and he says, no, I can't go now. I'm almost there where they will make me an elder. If I leave this church now, move it. Means I'm going to start from square one. Then you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> That's playing religion. It has nothing to do with eternal life. It has nothing to do with Jesus. It has nothing to do with he who is to come. You settled for less. You don't care about wasting Yeshua's time. You're wasting God's time if you're in a place you're not productive. He's coming very soon to require from all of us what he has committed into our hands. Paul the Apostle said, I confer not with flesh and blood. This is not a time to confer with flesh and blood, but it's time to go ahead and do what God has called you to do. Everyone has a ministry to fulfill. He went for the best. Amen. He didn't stay around. So my word of encouragement to all is to rise and go for the best. No matter how long it will take Satan to put you on the floor, delay you, waste your time. As soon as you recognize it, move. Andrew did. He was with John the Baptist. Nice powerful servant of the Lord. But when he saw the superior, when he knew about the superior, he said, that's fine. Thank you, John, for what you've done in my life, for ministering, for probably baptizing me and bringing me to salvation. But I have found the Messiah of I go. 
Let's go for the best, where your spirit man will be fed. Let's go where you can put into practice the things the Lord had given to you. Do not settle for less, not at all. Don't let tribalism or racism to keep you back in a particular church. They came from your people. They have the same color. They have popular names. Oh, they've got these. And then they are one million. Those things, you will risk eternal life don't what other things can we learn about andrew he's a possibility thinker powerful one in the book of john chapter 6 verse 5 to 9 when jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great multitude come unto him he said unto philip whence shall we feed by bread that these may eat and this he said to prove him for he himself knew what he would do Philip answered him, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said unto him, unto him, There is a lad here, which have five barley loaves and two small fishes, with, but what are they among many? Hmm. When the Lord asked Philip where to buy bread philip was like what this number of people jesus four thousand five thousand men beside women and children <laughs> no lord what are you asking me about what are you asking me for where will it come from but there was somebody there called andrew who remembered the noble's child got um, um daughter um, the noble man's child got healed he remembered if he could do this with him, all things are possible. He remembered he revealed himself to his brother, Peter, that he is the son of Elohim, the son of the living God. So if he is, he can feed 5,000 men beside women and children. He discerned that something is being staged up here. So he quietly said, there is a lad here with five loaves and two fishes. He didn't doubt in his mind. If he can ask us to fill empty pots with water and turn it to wine, hey, he can turn five loaves and two fishes to feed these thousands. All I need is to speak out. Andrew saw that. He saw the child and he spoke up. He didn't kick it off he didn't dismiss it and say oh it doesn't matter he brought it to the attention of jesus may we be those who will make firm steps of belief in the name of jesus may we believe that god with god all things are possible may we know him for who he is and what he can do may we not despise small things andrew didn't andrew remembered may we remember his goodness may we remember his mercy i remembered this morning you no know, having five children and having to run around when they're unwell the grace god had given to me in hospital and out and to believe and to speak faith into them seeing that sometimes you go in and you come back and you're told nothing and I was so grateful to the Lord for the grace and I'm like it's not by power nor by might I was remembering so many things and I said God if you could do this if you could do this if you could do this ah even the situation we are now, even in the turbulent times, the law, the world is in now. God is able to show himself strong on the behalf of everyone. Wow. Andrew remembered and said, all I need is, to, all I need to do is speak up. That's a lad here. I've seen him. Those miracles. We've been with him. He can do it again. God will do it again in your life. Only believe and thank him for the ones he had done. He will do more. Amen. What other things can we learn from Andrew? He is the gatekeeper. The fellowship get, gatekeeper. So if you're the one that stands at the door as an usher, don't look down on yourself. There's a reason. 
Amen. If you're made the protocol officer of a church, glory be to God. Let's see Andrew in John chapter 12, verse 20 to 22. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at, at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and, and telleth Andrew. And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. So this is a salient point, but it means a lot. Although not much was said about it, Andrew was the gatekeeper. Philip had to come to him to say to him, Andrew, come and see. We could also learn something from that. Philip couldn't believe, you know, they couldn't see how 300 penny worth of food can feed, but it was Andrew that had that insight. So he had to go to Andrew, consult Andrew. It means something about Andrew. Have you seen such brethren at church? Or even yourself, everybody will refer back to you. People come to ask you. And sometimes you wonder and say, why are they asking me this? I don't even know. But everybody comes. And the things that come from you is the solution. Everybody thinks you know everything about the pastor, about everything happening. And every brother, you are the spiritual gatekeeper. Amen. So carry on praying for brethren. God will reveal things to you about them. Keep doing the things. God will show you everything about the ministry. Keep praying for the word. God will show you and you'll be surprised. People will be coming to you to find out. And you'll be wondering, it's because you are the gatekeeper. Philip, okay, knew it and came to him and asked for permission. He was a quick thinker who did not delay in connecting those people to Jesus. Philip didn't want to make another mistake. Said, Andrew, come. You're the quick thinker. You are the one who knows what to do. Amen. May you be that in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. So the next one, um, the last. Mm, which others did? But he did. He defected with others. In John 21 verse 8. And the older disciples came in a little ship. Uh, for they were not far from the land, but as it were, 200 cubits dragging the net with fishes. He was among those who went back a fishing. When the Lord says, from henceforth, you will catch men. And after three and a half years, all of them. So we're going to see that, that attribute. And then we've studied it in the life of Peter. What a leader's sin can lead others into. So he went out fishing with the rest of the disciples. Nobody reminded each other they have transited from fishing fish to fishing men. They forgot too soon. A good excuse may have been that they were hungry and needed to look after themselves just like any of us would have done. The pressure of rent, the pressure of food, the pressure of clothing, and then so many things. Pressure all around us. Um, the cares have driven us back to the things we came out from. It could have been tough in ministry, especially if you have a family and you're a full-time minister. It could be quite very tempting. Because um, where is it coming from? You're living by faith, trusting the Lord. So if it comes, okay. If it doesn't come, okay. And in such cases, you're not even allowed. God will not even give you the, you know, any ink inch of going to ask anybody for anything you are just there believe in him he's a god of miracle we can tell you he does miracle because we've experienced it in our own lives at the time we didn't look to the left or don't even know where it is coming from the lord has poured huge surprises the lord will still do it it may be hunger and lack and then haunt it may haunt you to frustration to go back to the things you've left please don't go back a fishing while the lord has called you to fish so so what can we learn in summary from andrew so many good things remember in summary andrew was the first 
he first find his brother Peter. Go and find your brother. Second, there was no complexity around him. He wasn't threatened. He wasn't, no, he didn't feel anyhow that his brother was promoted and he wasn't not at all. And we shouldn't do that. He didn't settle for less. As soon as he saw Jesus, mm, he joined a, he jumped in the um, wagon and straight off went with Jesus. He was a possibility thinker. He was a go-to person, the gatekeeper. And then in all these, there was one thing about him that didn't well, which we also pray when you look at yourself, everything is working. But one thing thou lackest, as Jesus said to the, that rich young man, one thing thou lackest is that one thing we lack today. We need to ask the Lord, fix me make it right and god will do it he defected with others don't follow the multitude to commit sin it might look popular everybody going for it sit back and says no i've come this far i've done this much i'm not going to compromise not at all shall we pray father we thank you today and we give you praise and we honor you you're a wonderful lord thank you for the lessons you've taught us thank you for the life of andrew quite a whole lot of things to learn from him lord jesus help us to brace ourselves he's run his race and we can see why you he was one of those that you called lord may these beautiful attributes be seen in us so that you will use us in our own time and Lord, even as he defected with orders, we've learned from that. Help us not to follow the multitude to commit sin, but to stand strong on your goodness in our lives. In Yeshua Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah.